Hello everyone, welcome to PyCon India 2021 and PyLady's India Experience Sharing session. Uh, for this, uh, this session, we have Anushi Maheshwari with us. So Anushi is currently a software engineer at Google and is working on some of the exciting components of databases. Besides this, she has also contributed to the top-notch Google-branded competitive programming competitions. Uh, Code Jam, Code Jam, uh, IO, and Kickstart in her 20% at Google. She is also a senior interviewer and is often engaged in collaborative interviews with scholars, improvising uh, their tech and interview skills. Before joining Google, she was pursuing a bachelor's in, uh, in electronics and communications and developed a knack for coding for, from competitive programming. Traveling the road from a beginner to a reputed coder and a non CAC and a tired two college student, she has tackled the most that you all have got to ask of. And here is, of course, to help all of us to, uh, to understand how to ace program, uh, problem solving from a non CS engineer's perspective. Welcome, Anushi. Uh, over to you. You can share your screen. Uh, thanks, Sukanya. Thanks for the introduction. Um, let me share my screen and uh, let's just get started. Uh, so Sukanya has already given a very good introduction, uh, but today, uh, since I'll be talking about problem solving, or as it is known popularly known as competitive coding. So let me just give you a brief about before my work in like before starting my work in Google, I was doing my EC. Uh, from a tire to college and uh, I didn't de had that much knowledge of computer science at that time but then I came across a uh, site like CodeChef and uh, it interested me a lot and there my journey began. So I've done competitive programming and my college so today I'll be helping you out uh, in various myths and various questions uh, and how you can ace it as well. All right, So let's get started. So uh, before we go deep into the topic, the very basic questions and for all the amateurs here, what is competitive coding or problem solving, right? So it's a science of solving problems in a time and resource challenge environment, right? You are given a limited time and you have certain problems. So you have to solve that in, a, in that given time frame. The problems here are well defined. That is, they are not open-ended. So the problem solutions are well known in advance and it's more of a sports coding so you do it uh, you do coding for sports right okay so that's about uh, what it is and but a very uh, another very basic question and which is like a must question for any field you start you should definitely ask yourself why you should do it right so the very first point is it improves your cognitive ability like as the other name that's problem solving suggests it improves you to solve problems, how you can solve uh, any real life problem, how you should tackle a problem. It will help you improve your cognitive ability and uh, like will go in the long term, right? Besides that, the com like competitive coding helps you improve your knowledge of data structures and algorithms. And DSA is like one of the fundamental subjects of computer science. Believe me, you can learn any framework, uh, be it like mobile framework, iOS uh, or web or backend, whatever it goes. DSA, OS, DBMS, these are like core fundamental subjects. If you have a strong grasp over them, you can learn any of them, any of the frameworks. Right? Like the list doesn't end here and, and this is the most interested point and, and various people enter into this field for the interview preparation. So if you are good into competitive coding, you are like you have covered 70% of your interview preparation already. Because uh, as a fresher, uh, most of the interviews are focused on DSA and it will go in the long term to help you crack FANG interviews. Right. And like last but not the least, this is like, one of the major points and you should definitely enjoy what you are doing. So I can say you once you are comfortable into a field, it's very much uh, habitual. Like You will get uh, habitual to that green thing and, and it will drive you. It will drive that force in you. So like, this is a really fun part and, and you will enjoy a lot and you will get a lot of swags as well if you do really well in the field. Okay, so 
another question is uh, most CSC students have, especially in college days, uh, even if they are amateur or even if they are intermediate into computer programming, they have like what they should uh, do and how they should manage their time between computer coding and software development. So here is my key on it. So if you are starting out, if you are starting out in the computer science, you don't have much of the knowledge, then start with competitive coding because the prerequisites here are pretty much less and you can, uh, you will get a good grasp over the core fundamental subject TSA and you don't need a lot of to know before, right? But like not everyone is on the same page, right? So if some people will love development more and they will say, you know, they are not that enjoying competitive coding. So my take on it is like, don't do competitive coding if you are really into software development and really like that. Uh, you have, you are getting a lot of amazing perks of development. So don't just come to this field just because of interview preparation. And, and the reason is because competitive coding is uh, way above uh, interview preparation. Uh, lead code or geeks for geeks for example is a way to go and it's much focused on interview preparation. So don't come from software development to competitive coding just for interview preparation. But if you are starting out then start out with this field I would say because it will help you in software development later as well. Okay. So enough of these basic questions. Let's see how you can uh, ace into competitive coding and let's have a roadmap for this. So, so the very first basic thing is like learning the coding right and and if you are already into your first year or done it you would already know basic coding but let's see what does basic coding means uh, and what do i mean here right so the basic coding actually covers a lot of things like if you see from a different perspective but here i would say just get comfortable with loops arrays and strings just get comfortable with uh, questions about these things these topics and uh, and it's and it's just enough don't really go deep uh, for example uh, if you will say like uh, before coming into cp before doing uh, competitive coding you should uh, learn oops uh, or learn some other constructs right learn some other uh, libraries so i would say don't really go deep because you don't know what is really useful and for example oops let's say oops oops is a very fundamental thing again but it's not that useful into competitive coding so don't go deep uh, before even knowing what is required. Just learn the basic things and enter into the field. The, the more you will have in the prerequisites, the more it's likely you will quit the field. So just keep it brief and enter as soon as possible, right? And the third point, again, like same thing, but the learning will happen on the fly. The things, the libraries that you don't know, of course the libraries are needed, but the libraries that you don't know will happen and will you will learn uh, by reading others code, by solving more questions, you will learn them. So don't make it the prerequisites, instead learn on the fly. Okay, so this is about the coding, uh, but let's see which language uh, you should choose and, and like, this is again a very popular question in competitive coding on which language you should choose. So the most two, the two most popular languages as a choice is C++ and Java. So C++ has pros of like being fast. It's it's really fastest. Uh, and uh, like other than C, uh, C++ has a libraries as well. So C++ is fastest. It has libraries and it's concise as well. So you'd have to write very short code uh, to make something work. Uh, but in Java, Java is two times slower than C++. But uh, and it's not that concise as compared to C++. Uh, but the pros here like with Java is that it's useful in development, general development, for example, if you do Android development or you do backend, then Java would be useful to you. Uh, C++ is re uh, useful if you are into something performance or something low level. Okay, so this is like C++ and Java, but let's see Python. So Python has all of these things. Uh, library support is really great. The conciseness is even better than C++. And it's also useful in development, almost all of these, right? Especially in ML and things like that, right? But the problem is it's very much slow, uh, 5x slower. Uh, the problem uh, with competitive coding uh, is that there are certain questions and those questions have time limits. For example, if a question is there and it's a one second time limit in C++, then it would be usually two seconds in Java. And in five seconds in Python, right? Ideally, it should be like that. But uh, sometimes your C++ solution will pass and uh, by Python won't. So there's a problem and that's why uh, 
I would say if you are starting out uh, and you don't really know uh, languages, then go with C++ because a lot of developers into competitive coding are into C++. But uh, if you already know Java, then you don't need to quit Java for learning C++. You can do that because there are some good programmers in Java as well. Once you are into this, uh, you are like intermediate player, then learn Python as well because uh, some library support like BigInt is not that great in C++ and Java. So once you have learned Python, uh, like the combo of C++ and Python for me goes really well. Okay, so the second point into our roadmap is jump into the sites, like jump into the popular sites directly. And why I say jump into popular sites? Because if you are in your college and uh, like there are some people uh, who will advise you uh, to lead code or do geeks for geeks first and or do some hacker rank practice problems. Uh, don't jump into code chef, code forces because they are too hard. Uh, but my take on it is, uh, once you are done with your prerequisites, jump into it because the more, uh, again, the more uh, you will increase your uh, preparation, uh, the less likely is that you will quit because you are not getting rewards or you, you don't really know which particular area is there which you should invest in. Uh, okay, so if you are like just starting out, you don't really have a good grasp uh, over DSA. For example, if you are second year students, you would not even have studied uh, basic data structures, right? Then start out with Code Chef long challenges. Long challenges are like, uh, have spent a day, so it would be good for you uh, because you have ample time. I'll talk about that uh, challenges part as well later. So Code Chef and Hacker Earth is the way to go for a beginners. If you are like, if you are intermediate into a field, uh, then jump into Code Forces at Coder and Top Coder. They are really great. They have very good problem sets. And the, just the problem is that they host only short contests. They don't host long contests. Uh, or if they host, like they, it is based on a team. So yeah, these are the popular sites. Uh, jump into it uh, directly. Don't uh, really say we are practicing problems. Or jump, jump into it. Okay, you will really learn uh, doing by doing. Right? Uh, there are other things as well. For example, Project Euler. Project Euler helps you improve your mathematics ability. Uh, so it's Project Euler is like maths plus computer science. So it will improve your maths part and there are o OJs as well. So for example, USICO. USICO is a very well designed uh, trained program for USA IOI uh, training Olympiads like uh, for that. It's uh, well uh, it's well written and if you are starting out then it's very good for you to start from here because it will go step by step. Right? And there are the OJs as well like Tim Moscat is Bosch Yuga. They have a lot of problems and uh, you can solve them as well in, in your practice right? So the third thing is like practice uh, and don't miss contest. Okay. So again, uh, some people don't do contest. They just practice problems, but like contests play a very, very important role in your preparation, in your, in you to ace the speed. And we will see like there are various other advantages. Uh, the next part of this presentation will completely see how uh, contest will help you identify which areas you should improve. So. My take on attempting to contest is you should definitely attempt, even if you are able to solve just one question. Definitely attempt it, okay? But there are again uh, two types of contests, as I told before. There is like long contest and there is short contest. So long contest has like uh, enough days to spend. For example, Coach of Long Challenge goes for 10 days. And if you are a beginner, then definitely start with this. Like long contest is a must for you. Uh, try to do this because you will have ample time to learn any new algorithm and then apply it. You can practice problems and then go to a contest question as well, right? But in short contests, usually you don't have enough time to learn a new algorithm and like go from scratch, but it's for intermediate and advanced participants. It actually improves your thinking ability. It helps you iterate faster, even either in debugging or in uh, iterating through various approaches. So. Uh, if you want to like uh, go over some international contests like ICPC or, or Hacker Cup or some things like that, like Code Jam, a uh, short contest will be useful to you there. So yeah, start from long contest, but yeah, uh, once you got into intermediate level, then switch to so short contest as well. Okay, so the last point in our roadmap is upsolving. Upsolving is actually a mistake. It's not a. Uh, it's not something uh, you should do. Like, uh, as in, it's a mistake that most people don't do. But it's really so common and it's so important that I have listed this as a part of roadmap. So make sure that you are upsolving. But before we let's see what upsolving means. Right. 
so a solving is let's say that you are attempting a contest a uh, code forces contest let's say and there are five problems for you and you were able to do two of those in that two hours duration and you read the third problem but you couldn't solve it uh, be it a wrong answer word it be it a time limit exceeded word it right so you were not able to solve it now a solving is solving the third question that you have read right you have read it it's it's very close to your level but you were not able to solve it so there is some gap between your knowledge and that question and that question will make sure that you are actually doing something that you don't know right because a lot of problem a lot of people what they do is like they will uh, take some section for example let's say course of easy section or a uh, beginner section they will do all the problems here it won't really help it uh, it won't really help you improve and this is uh, like you will be at your same level you want see improvement in your performance so make sure that you are absorbing like when when i was in my college i wasn't absorbing at that time and i wasted a uh, months into this uh, i wasn't improving so then i realized okay that's the, the problem is that i'm solving the same kind of questions i know and i'm just wasting my time the main thing is solving those questions that i don't know and learning something new so make sure that the questions that you have read you definitely do that uh, but don't do those questions that are like above way, way above your level for example the same code force contest you gave you were able to solve two question and you are directly after the contest you are directly jumping into the fifth one in tutorial uh, you won't really understand it because it's like a combo of uh, some algorithms you don't know uh, like you don't know both algorithms and it's a combo or it's some specialized trick over that so don't jump into very high level uh, questions because you won't really understand it uh, a jump into it if you have time but uh, make sure that you are solving the next question that's very very important okay so apart from that uh, the peer group uh, peer group is one of the very important things uh, which is helpful for you for uh, acing your for acing your preparation so if you have your college then if in your college if you have any coding clubs then definitely join it because in your college coding clubs there would be other participants you will be solving contest you will be doing your contest with uh, in a group and after the contest is over you can discuss the problems you can discuss the solution the various approaches that you guys did right so college coding clubs is if you have it then it's really well definitely join it but if like if you are from a tier 2 tier 3 college and you don't have a uh, college club then don't uh, get disappointed because uh, so like one of the best thing about a cs is that everything is online and once you are into this field uh, you can make online friends as well uh, people at your level or, or slightly above or slightly below your level will uh, will be will be uh, uh, helpful in you uh, like will, will be up for the discussion right and they will be like your online friends after the contest you can discuss the problems with them as well so uh, peer group uh, either be online friends or be it college coding clubs is definitely great because it helps you to gamify this uh, picture like gamify the complete contest right okay uh besides that uh like besides discussing solutions and learning the code forces gym contest is uh, another thing that you can do as a peer group because it helps like it it goes as a team and there are the challenges as well like for example icpc or you have to participate as a team although college team but uh, yes so if you have a team or a peer group then it is going to definitely help okay so before we end this uh, one very important thing is resources uh, where you should learn about competitive coding right so the resources that i followed were i read a book called competitive programming 3 by steven felix i have read most part of it and uh, i can say for sure that this is a very very great book uh, of the like, of competitive coding and uh, if you are uh, if you really want to is uh, like if you want to excel then uh, this could be a uh, this could be a one way uh, like this could you can read this book it's great it it's it will help you know certain algorithms that you don't know okay and there is the site cpalgorithms.com it also lists on uh, major algorithms and uh, it, it the site the site has very concise way of writing down an algorithm approach uh linking the practice problems that you should solve to understand that thing and uh, complexity and a uh, best like the best uh, or in the concisest uh, uh implementation of that particular algorithm so this is a very good site uh, you can follow 
other than these sites uh, there are like top coder articles so and code forces and code chef blogs uh, not everything is covered into all of uh, like, into these articles and blogs but uh, the most part is for example like they are famous for one particular thing for example top coder is really famous for c++ stl and uh, top coder is also famous for graph flows right and code forces and code chef uh, blogs they have very great community so let's say that you want to know centroid decomposition right and you just search centroid decomposition into code chef uh, uh, code forces uh, search uh, there would be some person who would have already see uh, already posted uh, what are the best resources to learn this particular topic and they will uh, like uh, participants the advanced participants uh, will list on some of the resources that they followed so you can search into these blogs to find out uh, the other resources there are various resources actually they are scattered all over, across the web for example quera is also uh, has one of the great topic of like uh, this heavy light decomposition but i guess so uh, there are these things are scattered but you can find them in these blogs okay so yeah that's from my side and uh, thank you for attending this uh, presentation and uh, let me know if you have any questions thank you anushi thank you so much for this presentation uh, you can keep your slide on i think we can take uh, two or three questions uh, anushwini do we have any questions uh if there are any please post it in the uh, chat and i shall redirect to anushi so from Man manav sethi we have one question uh, what is your opinion on the fact that competitive coding promotes kind of non holistic view of looking at computer science uh, for example students spend four years at uh, just doing computer coding uh okay so my take on it is uh, it's a person to person view right uh, it depends you really want to uh, go very deep into algorithms uh, you really want to crack uh, you really want to just focus on competitive coding for four years but my advice is you, you should not uh, you should learn uh, software development as well so what i advise usually is start with competitive coding because it will improve your knowledge of language and dsa and then you should do soft software development and mostly you should do open source like in software development i suggest open source doing open source but there are uh, participants on other page as well uh, they say that they want to do well in icpc and icpc being a like international contest and uh, there are various participants who have been uh, doing coding like doing competitive coding from years right so uh, to get a good rank there definitely do you need to spend time so it's person to person view but if you are more into learning diversified thing then you should do competitive coding and then switch to development as well okay and if you want to excel into some international contest then then you can spend more time with this thank you anushri uh, yes uh, there are uh, there will be more questions but uh, in case just an announcement if we are running out of time feel free to join uh, 2021 slash uh, stage slash 5 on zulip and anushi would be available there uh, you can you can take uh, you can also interact with her there um, uh, meanwhile there's another question uh, where well, the uh, question uh, was asked by someone anonymous uh, uh, so the question looks like what you would like to suggest for senior engineers having Eight plus years of experience, who works in multiple programming languages and system design, but uh, need to refresh DS. Okay, so I would suggest don't jump into competitive coding because competitive coding is uh, uh, is for uh, if is mostly for like if you want to really. So the long thing in that goes into competitive coding, for example, is ICPC and uh, these contests, right? Because these are international contests, right? So, if you are already into development into eight years, then most likely, what I think is, you will be doing this for doing interview preparation and refreshing your memory like for interview preparation, right? So, my take on it is uh, that you should not jump into competitive coding. Instead, do lead code, uh, geeks for geeks interview preparation things, right? 
because uh, that will refresh your memory uh, that will refresh your algorithm and data structure usages and uh, that will be much more focused for your interview preparation and competitive coding is uh, way ahead of interview preparation right it's uh, more of your investment into learning algorithms complex algorithms and it goes a uh, great way uh, so but i think if you are already into development because see development is the long term of your computer science then if you are already into development find it very rewarding then then don't jump uh, just into competitive coding for interview preparation do lead code instead because it would be much more focused thank you anushi uh, anupreet uh, to answer your questions where can you get the slides well post uh, post all the sessions uh, post the conference we'll post the slide on the 2021/stage/5 uh, uh, stream on zulip so uh, follow that and you shall get the slide uh, there is a question again an anonymous question anushi uh, can you give a source on java being twice slower than c++ is there is there a factual reference uh there are if like there are references because java handles a lot of errors and uh, memory issues for these things uh, uh i can search for it like i need to uh, find out the article and then i can give it but for certainly like the time limits uh in most of the sites is twice as given as for c++ even if you see like uh let's remove the competitive coding part even if you see uh various low level things for example your camera image processing then they do it in c++ and uh, they are like they have tried it i got them same algorithm in java and it was much slower than compared to c++ because of handling these things uh, cuz c++ is very close to memory and uh, cpu all of these things that's why java handles a lot of uh, these errors for you thank you anushi uh i'll take the last question before probably we can just take one more question um sure. so uh, what if uh, i don't enjoy competitive coding but somewhat good at development most companies in india ask to solve critical coding problems in online test and interviews how do i get a job this is uh, again uh, an anonymous asker okay yeah so if you are if you love software development then i understand because like there are a lot of people who don't really uh, find this enjoyable competitive coding then my take on it is to software development uh, don't jump into something that you don't find enjoying right but as you said uh, most of the companies ask for uh, these questions uh, then uh, i would say then do, do lead code uh, because lead code have those uh, questions that have been asked before and they are much more similar and much more focused for interview preparation don't do competitive coding these contests and uh, these would be uh like these go in the other way uh it's much more time investment as compared to interview preparation you can do lead code and uh, get a good grasp of it and uh let's uh, see the other part so if you have a good profile into development as well right then companies do respect that uh it's just that uh you should have a good profile a uh, profile that could be represented because in competitive coding for example uh, if you are doing com- uh, code chef code forces then you have a profile right but in case of development if you are just doing some personal project then uh, then it like make sure that you have uh, some online repository for example get up right you have some profile there that that shows that how hard you have worked over a year to uh, do some project right or do open source because open source is a great way not just to learn development but also to learn community like how to interact with community how to interact cross site uh, cross site and how to uh, deliver a project something like that so uh, open source is another way Uh, of going to develop and which helps you build your profile as well thank you thank you anushi